we're going to talk about tonight is the immune system. Perfect time of the year to be talking about the immune system. Because so many of us already are starting to get colds. How many people have gotten sick so far? Nobody? Cool. Great. Okay. <laughs> You're going to start to see it happen very quickly. So what we're going to do is talk about thing, what the immune system is, how it works, things that stress the immune system, and then what you can do literally every day to avoid getting sick. Now when I talk about immunity, it's not just cold and flu. Every disease known to man has to do with the immune system. You think cancer has anything to do with the immune system? Okay, arthritis, osteoporosis, lupus. These are all immune issues. So the things we're going to talk about today is not only for cold and flu, it's for everything. Okay? Now if you have a question that's imperative, you have to ask it right away, feel free. If not, hold it to the end. Chances are I'm going to answer your question for you. I've done this lecture before. Okay? So let's talk about first how the body works. The way the body works is your brain sits up here, right? In most cases. And your brain sends messages down your spine, out your nerves to every cell in the body. Everything works because the brain tells it what to do. Can we agree with that? Okay? There's two things that can interfere with the messages from the brain to the body. One is chemical and one is physical. Chemical is, is what? Food you eat. Medications, toxins you're exposed to, poisons, air pollution. These are chemical things that can damage your immune system or your nervous system. The other one is physical. And this is the one that seems to be totally ignored by the healthcare profession. And this is why we don't have a very high success rate. There's a new study just out. Life expectancy in the United States. We are ranked 58th of industrialized nations. There are 50, 59th, I'm sorry. There are 58 countries that you have a longer life expectancy than you do right here. That's scary. Because isn't that the game? How long you live? Live long and win, right? So your life expectancy is 58 other countries that you have a better chance of living a longer life than here. Something's wrong. Okay? Infant mortality. We're not the best country. We're way down the list in infant mortality. And yet we spend more money per person than anybody else in the world. And we're still ranked 59th. Something's wrong. The reason is, one of the reasons is, we don't address the physical component of healthcare. Okay, so let's talk about physical damage to a nerve. If I were to cut the nerve to your arm, that would be 100% physical damage, yes? Your arm is paralyzed, yes? No matter what you do, no matter how many drugs you take, how many herbs you take, how much tofu you eat, it's not going to get that arm working. We have less damage than that, okay? A bone in the spine can move out of place and pinch a nerve. And if a bone in the spine or the shoulder or the knee or the foot moves out of place, it can pinch a nerve. The nerve is still going to work, it's just not going to work at 100%. Anybody have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, arm pain, hand pain, wrist pain, okay? If you didn't raise your hand, you're probably too sore, right? You can get your arm up there. So. <laughs> pain is a warning sign telling you you have a pinched nerve. However, 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. This is the first aha moment of the night. 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. If I asked you where your thymus is, how many people know where your thymus is? Okay, one, two. Okay, no, it's not up here. Here, okay. <laughs> your thymus is one of your major immune glands. So if the thymus isn't working, could that affect your immunity? And there's a nerve that controls your thymus. It's right about here. So if I pinch the nerve to my thymus, my thymus can't work. You don't even know what a thymus is. Okay. When I, was, when I was starting out in school 30 years ago, we were taught the thymus gland, which sits right here, an adult shrivels up and dries out. You don't need it anymore. Oops, we were wrong. I was also taught that appendix wasn't necessary. Did you know there was a law in Georgia? No kidding. It's not too long ago. There was a law in Georgia that said if you have your, any abdominal surgery, you have to have your appendix removed. It was the law. Caesarean section, pop out an appendix. Okay? Now we find out the appendix is actually one of the immune organs. It, builds, it saves and stores bacteria, good bacteria, which helps the immune system. So the nervous system controls the immune system. And your thymus is right here, by the way, right underneath your breastbone. 
So the nervous system controls the immune system. If you have damage to the nervous system, the immune system can't work or work properly. So step number one, we have to have a normally functioning nervous system. Right, Desi, correct? All right, Desi agrees. Okay. Nervous system has to be working. Second thing is we have to be careful about what we do to our nerves chemically. So there are seven foods, that are eight foods actually, if you put in your body, are going to have an adverse effect on overall health, including the immune system. Now, the good news is there's 120,000 foods that are good for you. So if I was going to give you $120,000, I'm not going to do this. If I was going to give you <laughs> if I was going to give you $120,000, I want you to give me eight back. Would you do it? No, tr no strings attached. It's a good deal, right? Everybody agree it's a good deal? Okay, 120,000 good foods. Eight foods you want to be careful with, especially if you're worried about your immune system. Those eight foods are alcohol, commercial meats, commercial dairy, coffees, sodas, artificial sweeteners, and wheat. And collectively, you all had one thought. My God, that's everything. <laughs> You've had, okay, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Alcohol destroys your brain cells, right? How many people knew that? How many people forgot that? Okay. <laughs> alcohol destroys your brain. Your brain controls everything. We just started the lecture with that. Alcohol is also a sugar. Of the eight foods, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, and wheat, which do you think will get you sickest the quickest? Sugar. Sugar shuts down the immune system like that. Now watch what happens. Here's my prediction. Halloween comes. You're not going to eat candy. If you have kids, they will. But you're going to buy candy. And then there's leftovers. And you can't throw away leftovers, right? <laughs> the week after Halloween, watch how many people get sick. All the sugar weakens the immune system. They get sick. Start feeling a little better, start feeling a little better, then comes Christmas. The week between Christmas and New Year's, everybody's sick again. Then New Year's comes around, we drink what? Alcohol, it's a new year, let's destroy our brain. And, so, and then everybody's sick the following week again. Sugar will get you sick all the time, especially in the winter months. So step number one, I'm going to strongly advise that you curtail sugar. Now where do we find sugar? Everything, right? <laughs> Not just sugar, how about breads, cookies, cakes, pastas, donuts? All of that is sugar. And if you eat it, you'll feel yourself start to get weak. Now a simple experiment to do is go one week and not eat any processed carbohydrates or sugars. Okay. So that's no breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, and sugars. On the eighth day, have some donuts. Have some cookies. Watch what happens on the ninth day. Sinuses run, bloaty, gassy, feel like you're getting sick, achy, and you'll see it happen. The problem is that most of us eat simple carbohydrates constantly. And so we don't realize that we're sick all the time. Follow? And that's the neat part. When you get healthy, you never want to be sick again. And most people don't understand what it's like to be healthy because they're sick all the time. I want you to experience it just one day. And then you'll make a decision. You'll say, is it worth it? And I hope the answer is a resounding no. With me so far? Okay. So... The immune system is controlled by the nervous system. What you eat has a direct bearing on it. Your brain controls everything. Of the seven foods, what do you think has the most damage to the brain cells? Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweeteners. Uh, alcohol tied with artificial sweetener. Okay, if you take artificial sweetener, which is, which is the blue packet, when it gets into the system, it breaks down to three components. Aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Aspartic acid, when it gets in the brain, is necessary for the brain to function. The problem is when we throw too much aspartic acid at the brain at once, the brain gets so excited, the cells literally burst open and die. Artificial sweetener destroys brain cells. Not a good idea, is it? 
Okay? Do we have any packets? Okay? Artificial sweetener, when it gets into the system, destroys brain cells. It also breaks down into phenylalanine, which can affect your kidneys. No, uh, uh, packets of blue, blue stuff. It, it's in the pockets. And it also breaks down into aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Hold on one second. In here somewhere. There we go. Got it. Okay. Blue packet, right? You've all used it? Zero calories. You haven't used it. Good, I like that. When this gets into the system, it literally short circuits the brain and blows out the nervous system. Okay? Methyl esters is methanol. Methanol is wood alcohol. If I was going to give you a glass of wood alcohol and told you to drink it, I could be arrested and put in jail for attempted murder. Okay? So let's see what happens. You've got lots of muscles. Can you come on up here? <laughs> I want to show you what this does to your nervous system. What's your name? George. George? Yeah. Joe, good to see you. I face the crowd here. All right, George, he's got more muscles than me, all right? Put your arms straight out. Push up toward this guy. Wow. Push up real hard. I might have picked the wrong guy. <laughs> now, George, I wouldn't want you to eat this because I like you, but I'm going to have you hold it. Just put it in your hand, okay? And just wrap your hand around it. Now, Side note, your skin is a sponge. Anything that comes in contact with your skin gets absorbed. So a simple rule is this. This is a whole nother lecture. If you're going to use something on your body, shampoo, lotions, if you, sh if you can't eat it, you shouldn't put it on your body. Now, I'm not saying you have to eat it, okay? <laughs> but soaps, you want to be able to eat it and not get sick. Same thing with other things, other body products, okay? The reason I'm doing that is I want you to get this absorbed into your system, okay? So George's skin is absorbing the aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Watch what happens to the nervous system when it gets absorbed. You've been holding it for 30 seconds? Yeah. Okay. All right, put your arm straight out. Push up again. Oh, wow. One more time. One more time, yeah. <laughs> Tough guy. Push up again. <laughs> Isn't that freaky? It is freaky? Okay, go throw that away before you get sick. <laughs> now, George, how much can you bench press? Not a big bencher, okay. 335. Okay? I'm not a big bencher. 335. <laughs> I weigh 190, okay? He could spin me around if he wanted to. But you felt it go weak, didn't you? Every muscle in his body went weak. So you're thinking, well, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to have a diet soda to go with my french fries. <laughs> but every muscle in, in George's body went weak because that was absorbed into his system. The aspartic acid went up into the brain, short-circuited the electrical system. I hope that was enough to prove to you to not use artificial sweetener. How many products have artificial sweetener? A lot, yeah. <laughs> About six, 7,000 right now. It's in kids' supplements. The supplements shaped like uh, cartoon characters that lived in the dinosaur age. Artificial sweetener. Why? I don't know. I don't have that answer. But imagine if that happens to you every single day if you're chewing gum with, su with uh, sugar-free gums. The nice part is that here you can get gum with something called xylitol in it. Xylitol prevents tooth decay and builds the immune system as opposed to artificial sweetener that weakens the immune system and actually causes you to crave carbohydrates. You can actually gain weight by using artificial sweetener. Wow. Okay? 30 years ago, I used to teach nutrition. And I'd say, if you eat 1,000 calories, you've got to burn off 1,000 calories. doesn't work that way anymore. Now we have, uh, uh, what would they call, obesogens. A chemical called an obesogen is actually a chemical with no calories that makes you gain weight. Now where can we find an obesogen? If you heat plastic in a microwave oven, it releases a chemical called xenoestrogen. Xenoestrogens act like estrogen only 300 times stronger than human estrogen. Estrogen is a fat building hormone. It counteracts testosterone. Now why do we need testosterone? 
builds muscle. But not just here. How about your heart, your colon, your liver, your spleen? All of these require muscle function. Estrogen counteracts testosterone. Testosterone is your sex drive hormone, your reproductive hormone. Makes your blood vessels work. So if you're eating plastic, especially microwave plastic, you're, re- you're exposing yourself to the xenoestrogens. And as the body loses its testosterone, it can become weaker and more susceptible to disease. It can affect your immune system. Styrofoam cups, if you put hot in it. Not those kind, but the styrofoam cups. If you go to a, a fast food joint, styrofoam container, you scrape it, you're eating xenoestrogen. Xeno meaning foreign, estrogen meaning estrogen. Wow, that's some serious stuff. Okay? So why would you want to compromise your immune system by doing that? There's no need for it. But sugars and carbohydrates, boy, I tell you what, if you give them up for a week and then you eat them, you'll feel yourself get sick, especially in the winter. And you gain weight. Okay? Estrogens, counteracts testosterone. You saw what it did to George here. Aspartic acid. Now, some aspartic acid is necessary. Too much of it blows out the electrical system. The nervous system controls everything. Remember, we talked about that. Okay? With me so far? Good. Okay. How about things we can do to keep the immune system healthy? How about that? That sounds good? Number one, not only is your thymus and your lymph glands and your spleen part of the immune organs, your stomach I consider an immune organ. Because as you're eating, you're exposing yourself to bacteria, germs, and viruses. Stomach acid kills them off. If you have low stomach acid, you can't fight off the germs, bacteria, and viruses that get into the system. 85% of my patients have digestive problems. 15% lie. (laughs) Smart crowd, they got it. Everybody's got something. Gas, bloating, diarrhea, acid reflux. But it's not something we talk about. It's not first date material, is it? Meet somebody at Match.com. Hi, I'm Joe. I'm a little gassy today. You don't talk about it. (laughs) But if you're not digesting your food properly, it's a sign that something's wrong. So if you have acid reflux, we're taught that that's too much what? Acid, too much stomach acid. It's coming up. It's not too much stomach acid. It's too little stomach acid. And let me explain why. You eat something, okay? Eat this great food that Whole Foods has laid out tonight for us, okay? You eat that. It goes into your stomach. The acid breaks down the proteins into amino acids and it passes into your small intestine. Other digestive enzymes go to work. Bacteria go to work and you digest your food. If you don't have enough stomach acid... What happens is the food sits in your stomach for too long. And when it sits too long in your stomach, it'll rot. And when it rots, it produces something called lactic acid. What refluxes up is some stomach acid or hydrochloric acid, but a lot of lactic acid. So one of the ways to stimulate that, to get it moving quicker, is to stimulate your digestive enzymes. So you have more stomach acid, so the food goes down instead of coming back up. Make sense? Okay. So many times people ask me questions, and on the surface it seems like, well, I got acid, I must have too much acid. It's too little acid. One of the quickest, easiest things you can do, especially in the winter months, to keep your immune system working, is raw organic apple cider vinegar. Raw organic apple cider vinegar, when it gets into your system, helps the digestive process. And I can't tell you how many people have sent me emails and letters and phone calls and said, Doc, I started doing the raw organic apple cider vinegar, my digestive problems went away. Now it's got to be raw, it's got to be organic, and it's got to be apple cider vinegar. What I recommend is about two tablespoons a day. Now, if you're like me, Raw organic apple cider vinegar tastes awful. Okay. <laughs> but that's okay. I like to mix it with tomato juice. I take a tomato based juice and I'll drink it with that. It goes down a lot easier. Somebody said the other day, one of my patients said, Dr. Joe, I eat a pickle after I drink it and it goes down easier. I don't know how he figured that out, but okay. <laughs> but it's really neat. 
If you start doing the apple cider vinegar, it, alkal- it alkalizes your system. Even though it's an acid, it alkalizes your system. Gives you a ton of energy. You feel great. You digest your food better. No downside. Bottle will cost you about four bucks. Really a neat little trick. If you don't like the flavor of it, you can always use it as a salad dressing. Which is kind of neat too. Okay? But that's one of the greatest investments I think you should have in your pantry is raw organic apple cider vinegar. Another thing that's excellent to keep the immune system strong. Garlic. Grandma Esposito, she knew. Okay? Garlic is antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. However, it's got to be raw. And what you want to do is take the garlic and mash it up before you eat it. The reason is there's two chemicals in garlic called allicin and allicinase. They need to interact with each other. And when they interact with each other, they create the antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal function. So if you just took a clove of garlic and swallowed it whole, it wouldn't work. Smash it up, let them interact, let it sit for five minutes, put it through a garlic press, works real well, and then you're going to see the reaction. So I t- if I start feeling a little sick, I'll tell you my tricks, okay? The things that really work. I'll take a clove of garlic every meal. Now, what about your friends? You don't have any, okay, because you stink. <laughs> parsley counteracts the smell of the garlic. So a big handful of parsley is loaded with vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. It's also diuretic, helps you pee. And it also counteracts the smell. So that's a fun little trick you can do. Fresh parsley, just eat a handful. Okay? So that's kind of neat. Onions are high in a chemical called quercetin. Quercetin is nature's antihistamine. So if you add onions and garlic, you're going to help dry up the sinuses. It's nature's antihistamine. Now you can take quercetin supplements if you want to. It's okay. Okay, but onions work well. With me so far? Okay. Another trick. If you have a flu, what's one of the signs? Fever. Headache and fever. The fever, the body raises the body temperature to help fight off the invaders. So what happens if we're starting to feel sick if we create an artificial fever? Take a hot bath. If I start feeling under the weather, I run home, sit in my hot tub, I have a jacuzzi tub, as hot as I can take it. And within about 15 minutes or so, I start to feel better. So heat is wonderful. Now saunas work, spas work, far infrared saunas work, hot tubs work. Be careful with hot tubs, there's a lot of chlorine in there. Chlorine is a poison. Okay? So raise the body temperature. Works great when it comes to colds and flu or any immune reaction. Okay? It's kind of neat. Any questions so far? What about what? Drinking something hot is excellent, but just be careful. Any coffee drinkers? Okay. Nothing has more synthetic pesticides in the world, in the food world, except aside from commercial coffees. Okay? So if you're going to drink coffee, well, don't. But if you do, well, don't. But if you still do, organic coffee. I'm begging you. Some things I'll negotiate with you when it comes to organics. Coffee is not one of them. Okay? Now, something that's been taught is that if you have a cold or flu, it's a good idea to drink orange juice, right? You've heard that? The problem with orange juice is that the orange juice is high in in a sugar called fructose. Your body can process about 25 grams of fructose a day. Anything beyond that gets into the liver, and beyond that, it gets converted into something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide prevents your body from producing something called a uh, uric acid. I'm sorry, it converts into uric acid. Back that up. Uric acid prevents your body from producing nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. And if you open up the blood vessels, it allows blood flow to all the parts of your body. Okay? You see commercials, especially during sports, for little pills that help blood flow to certain parts of your body. There's kids here. (laughs) 
Uric acid prevents nitric oxide, prevents the production of blood uh, vasodilation. Now, in the seven, before the 70s, we didn't have anything called high fructose corn syrup. Now we do. Where do you find high fructose corn syrup? Everywhere. Okay? High fructose corn syrup, if you eat 100 calories of sugar, plain old white sugar, one calorie gets stored as fat. If you eat 100 calories of high fructose corn syrup, 42 calories get stored as fat. So essentially, it's 42 times more fattening than sugar. Even though it's the same amount of calories. Remember we talked about that earlier? Same amount of calories, 42 times more fattening. Wow. And most of the high fructose corn syrup is made with something called genetically modified corn. That's a whole nother lecture on genetically modified foods, okay? It's not good. So high fructose corn syrup, not good. Uric acid, when it gets into the body, gets into the joints and causes pain. I'm a chiropractor. People come to me for pain. And I say, we're going to check two thi- well, three things on your body. Number one, we're going to check the nervous system. Because if a bone is pinching a nerve, it can cause pain. So if I'm, if I'm pinching a nerve and it hurts, put the bone back in place. Make sense? Okay. So give me a finger. If I'm squeezing your finger, how do we stop the pain? Stop squeezing it, right? It's logic. So if you're squeezing your finger and it hurts, stop squeezing it. If, I'm bo- if a bone is pinching a nerve, unpinch it. I don't know how to make it any easier for you. So step number one, if you're having joint pain, see if the bones are out of place, put them back in place, and most of the time, it works very well. Okay? Step number two, your digestive system has to be working. If you're not digesting your food, you're absorbing waste products that should be being passed out of your system, and that can get into the joints and cause pain. And then step number three, we want to make sure we're eating the right foods because certain foods will increase your pain level. If you're eating high fructose corn syrup every single day, it's going to create uric acid, which can get into the joints and cause pain. So I may be doing the best chiropractic work you've ever had that's ever been done. But you've got to work with me and help me. Okay? So high fructose corn syrup is not a good thing and it also can stress the immune system. With me so far? So if we're going to drink coffee, please do organic. I prefer you do organic decaf, but I prefer you don't do coffee. Okay? If you need coffee and you need it for energy, which is why a lot of people drink it, okay, I would suggest trying a supplement called Siberian ginseng. Sometimes called Euluthro, E-U-L-U-T-H-R-O. Euluthro, or Siberian ginseng, is amazing. If you want to get a burst of energy, wean off the coffee, keep your mind clear, non-toxic, it helps your adrenal glands work better, that would be the supplement of choice. We're going to cover supplements in just a second, okay? Because I know everybody wants to know about supplements. I'm going to teach you all about that. Teas are great. Teas are great. I'm a big fan of tea. I drink tea every single day. Now, in the winter, sometimes you get scratchy throats, runny nose. There's a tea called Slippery Elm. Slippery Elm tea, and a lot of different brands have it. They they name it their own name, but Slippery Elm actually lines your mucous membranes. So it's great for sore throats. It's great for irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, even acid reflux cases. It helps soothe the mucous membranes. And that's something that I drink a lot of because I do a lot of speaking. Okay, so I like to make sure that throat is always working. So that would be a nice tea to have in the house. Okay? But that's a great question about teas. Yes? Green tea is excellent. I prefer you do organic if you can. But green tea is good. It's high in an antioxidant called EGCG. I just like the name. (laughs) But it's a great antioxidant. It's very good for you. It does have a little caffeine though. Some people get headaches from caffeine. I'm one of them. Okay? So I can't do caffeine. But green tea is excellent. Okay? Fresh ginger tea. What I do in the winter, starting around now, is I get my organic ginger 
and I peel it. Okay, you can use a spoon to peel it, a, 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 a potato peeler, whatever you'd like. I put it in my Vitamix or a good food processor. I covered about one third with lemon juice. And I puree it, and I puree it for a while so you break up all the strings, and then I put it in an ice cube tray. I freeze it. And every morning, pop out an ice cube, put it in there, sweeten it with something called stevia. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And it's an amazing pick me up in the morning. Okay, it's a stimulant, it's a vasodilator, it's anti inflammatory, it's an aphrodisiac. Don't blame me. What? It's a what? Carminative. That's good for your stomach, exactly. It helps settle your stomach. And in fact, studies have been done that if you have morning sickness or nausea, ginger works just as well as prescription medications. Wow. So you can make a tea out of it or you can actually put it, uh, you can get it in a supplement form. Okay? Pretty neat stuff, isn't it? This stuff, great. I'm like, everybody's hand is going to hurt by the end of the day. Everyone is writing. So, except for you, you're making your wife write. Okay. <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, my understanding is that if we uh, talk about pH, uh, uh, if you comment on it, I just drink a lot of lemons. Yes. And is that the only thing I need to be out there? Absolutely. Ask about pH levels. Okay? Great question. pH is how much acid you have in your body. First of all, we want to test your acid level. And what you can do is get some pH paper. Okay, I don't know if we sell it here, but I know drugstores sell it. It's real easy. And it's in a roll. Your first morning urine. Pee a little bit. Wave the paper through it. You'll have a color chart. It'll turn a color. You want to be about 6.5 to 7.0. That's ideal. If you're too low, you're too acid. There are eight acid foods you want to cut back on. Guess what they are? Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial, sweetener, and wheat. Very convenient how they all fit into that category. If you're too acid, you cut that back out, you start to eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, your body will fall into that range. If you're really alkaline, you're really high on the chart, the number's really high, you're dying. Your body has been depleted of minerals. Minerals neutralize the acid. We were talking about that before with calcium and dairy products. Minerals neutralize the acid in your body. Once your, ad, your mineral supplies are all used up, you go from acid to very alkaline. Your kidneys are now producing ammonia. Ever been to a, a, a senior citizen home? Smells like pee? That's the body trying to keep them alive. I'm producing ammonia now to neutralize the acid. That's the danger zone. Very, very danger zone right there. You need to really give the body a lot of alkalinity. Celery, spinach, and figs are excellent alkalizers to the system. Anything green, wheatgrass, barleygrass, alfalfa grass, kamut grass, these are all alkalizing to the system. So, test your pH first. Lemon juice, even though it's an acid, will alkalize your system. Apple cider vinegar, raw organic apple cider vinegar, even though it's an acid, will alkalize your system. So by taking that apple cider vinegar, that can keep you in that 6.5 to 7.0 range. Pretty neat. So it's not just lemon juice, but that's a real good one. There you go. Now you got a double whammy. And celery, spinach, and figs. Okay? And the body, it's neat because your immune system works best slightly alkaline. It doesn't work very well when it's acidic. Most people are acidic. Alkalize the system, the immune system works better. Pretty neat, huh? So that's a great question. Thank you. So, yes? Yes. Yes. What about fruits? Fruits are high in fructose. Again, we can process about 25 grams a day. So if you have three, four, five pieces of fruit a day, you're fine. It loaded with minerals, the fruits, which will then bring your acidity back to normal again because the minerals neutralize the acid. Calcium is one of them, okay? Sodium is one of them, but natural sodium, okay? So, yes, the fruits are okay. I have no problem with them. Too much of it can actually cause a problem, okay? But you, when I say too much, that's like five, six pieces of fruit a day, okay? Uh, not a day, a meal. I'm sorry. Five or six a day is fine. Okay? Answer your question? Thank you. Right, how about some other... Tri yes? Sorry. It thins out your blood? Uh, eating too much fruit won't thin out your blood, no. 
We should be okay on that. Okay? How about some more tricks about colds and flu? We want to hear some more tricks? All right, starting today, I want you to stop cleaning your ears. Okay, you can clean the outside. It just starts getting goopy. Okay? <laughs> but think about this. When you get a cold or flu, where does it start? On either side of your throat? Usually everybody's putting their hands up like this, right? What's here? The eustachian tube. The connection between the ear and the throat. Now your mouth and your nose are loaded with uh, hairs and, and saliva and enzymes to break down viruses, germs, and bacteria. Your ear only has wax. You clean out that wax, you've got an instant entry into your body. And if you don't believe me, clean your ears really good and watch within the next couple of days you'll probably start getting a sore throat. You've probably never put that all together in one little thought. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, she said she had problems with her ears for years and she it would start itching so she tried to clean them out and then the wax would go away and it became a nightmare. Stop cleaning your ears. If you have to and it itches, just do this. Okay? Don't do this. Do this on the outside. Okay? If it's too late, you've already pulled all the wax out. Hydrogen peroxide. If you start feeling a sore throat, come on, you can pour hydrogen peroxide in the side where the sore throat is. Lay there for about 10 minutes. It sounds really cool. Okay? And that'll help tremendously. Gargling with hydrogen peroxide is excellent. Another thing I'd like for you to consider every day is air-dried sea salt. It's got to be air-dried or sun-dried sea salt. Gargle with it. Because if you have inflammation, the salt will pull the, pull the swelling out of the infla inflamed area and help bring down the inflammation. Also, viruses, germs, and bacteria, when you put them in salt water, die. They burst open. So it's a great thing to gargle every day. If you want to clean your sinuses out, get yourself something called a neti pot. You know what a neti pot is? Did you ever use one? Yeah. Really weird. Okay? <laughs> it's a little teapot. You put salt and water in there. You put it up one nostril and it comes out the other. And you're thinking, this is the weirdest thing. <laughs> but it flushes out the germs, bacteria, and viruses. You don't want to do that every day. You can do it maybe two, three times a week. Dr. Oz swears by it. Dr. Oz swears by it. If he swears by it, I think he listens to my radio show. <laughs> Because I'll do a show, and a week later, he has a whole segment on it. And I'm thinking, he's sneaking into my radio show. So. <laughs> but neti pots are cool. Okay? But again, please don't clean the ear, especially with Q-tips. Not a good idea. All right? Yes? Vitamin D3. Okay? You, the sun is on a different angle now here when not getting vitamin D3. Number one, if you want to find out if you should take it, get blood work done, see where your blood levels are. I take about between two and 5,000 international units a day. There's two types of vitamin D3. One comes from fish oil, one comes from lanolin, sheep wool. I use the sheep wool. I don't eat animal products. I haven't had animal products in 26 years. I'm 50 years old. It's working so far. Okay? So, I use the lanolin version of vitamin D3. I don't like it in a gelatin capsule. I like the plant-based or the vegetable capsule because the gelatin is high in glutamic acid. Glutamic acid has the same effect on the brain as aspartic acid. It excites the brain to death. Okay? So I take that every day. Now here's the trick. You want to make sure you take it with something fatty. Vitamin D3 is absorbed with fat. If you don't have fat in your diet, you can't absorb it. So an avocado. A salad with some olive oil in it. Coconut milk. Something with some fat in it. Okay? I take two to 5,000 international units a day. If I start feeling sick, I'll take 20,000 international units for about three or four days. And then I'll feel better. So that's another trick. Okay? So let's talk about some herbs that are good for colds. We talked about garlic and onions. Ginger we talked about. If you have a, a stuffed up nose, want to clear it out instantly? Horseradish. You've done it. You've done it at the sushi bar, right? You take the wasabi, you go, oh, oh my nose, my nose. Do it. Clear your sinuses right out. Hot peppers. Hot
Hot peppers are vasodilators. They open up your blood vessels. Excellent. Okay? Echinacea. Powdiarco. Things that help stimulate white blood cell production. I'm going to give it to you real simple in a second. I'll tell you how you can get it in a real simple form, okay? Uh, Powdiarco. Olive leaf extract. Antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. With me so far? Okay. We talked about the grasses to alkalize the system. Wheatgrass, barley grass, alfalfa grass. Your thyroid gland is important as part of the immune function. And the thyroid gland works very well when it has iodine. The problem is that a lot of us drink fluorinated and chlorinated water. And we eat breads that have something called bromine in it. Bromine, fluorine, and chlorides get into the thyroid gland and block the receptor sites so you can't absorb iodine. So you want to make sure you're getting iodine. Chances are most of us don't get any iodine in our diet because we don't eat seaweed. Okay? 